Hi. Oh, wow, it's actually working. <laughs> <laughs> we got it to work. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, it only took about 22 minutes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, the important thing is we got it to work. So, yay. Yeah. How are you? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Good. Stress levels can come down now that the technology is working. I don't know what's going I know. I know. I don't know. I don't know why they make it so difficult. It's like, it's like, it's great when it works, but when you can't get it to work, it's extremely frustrating. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I don't do any of this Facebook Live stuff. I do a lot of uh, like Microsoft Teams for work, but, I, but those kinds of tools are built for this kind of stuff. And Facebook. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you're not in a snowsuit, so is your apartment warmer now? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, we we got the window issue resolved. Uh, I guess one of the windows in the apartment wasn't properly sealed, and uh, yeah. So anyway, maintenance came by and did fix it, despite the fact that it sounded like they couldn't do anything till spring. So nice and warm. Oh my goodness! Well, I'm glad they got that fixed. Good. <laughs> when you showed the temperature, I was like, oh my goodness, that was cold. Very, very cold. I remember it was like minus 10 or something in my daughter's room. Yes. Inside of an apartment. That's crazy. Yeah. But it's warm here again now and it's good. It's a uh, rendezvous time here, which is kind of our annual kind of festival in the winter and it's warmed right up now. It's probably only like I don't know, minus two or three, I would guess right now. And uh, so people can get out and see snow sculptures and enjoy the outdoors and the warmth. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thankfully it's getting, uh, it's this sun has finally started to come out here and it's getting a little bit warmer here and the snow is actually starting to melt. So oh, I think nice. spring is on its way here, I think. So I'm kind of happy about that. But you're much further north than I am. Yeah. Much further. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where are you looking? I'm in Illinois. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. And I, I wanted to ask you, um, what brought you to where you're living now? Uh, work, basically. Um, <laughs> I'm from Newfoundland originally. Uh, and I was running a uh, photography business back there, but it was in a town of uh, about 600 people. So I guess, you know, you kind of run out of clients after a while. And then there was an opportunity up here uh, with some people I knew. Uh, and they said there was lots of work and stuff. So I said, well, I might as well move up there and give it a try. Uh, it's all the way across the country, but um, yeah, it was a good, a good choice so i had a place to live for a few months and i looked for work and uh, yeah there's lots of opportunity up here so it was actually a good choice that's good that's good because i did i did look it up on the map and yeah <laughs> they couldn't be further away from each other <laughs> so <laughs> yeah that was like that's a big move that's a definitely a big move there yeah my partner and i were looking up like there was some kind of quiz thing the other night we were doing and it was like, oh, what's the furthest you've traveled? Something like that. I can't remember the exact question, but I was like, oh, well, it must be Florida. You know, I've gone to Disneyland and uh, looked up the mileage for that. And then I was like, well, I wonder how far Newfoundland is. And looked up that. Actually, Newfoundland was farther. So I'm like, I'm further. Yeah. 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 I believe that. I, I definitely believe that. Oh, and I, um, you know, I, I listened to your music again today because I wanted to get ready for, for our chat. And so I listened to it again today. And um, you, did you do everything yourself? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I did everything. Uh, I'd given up guitar and music for like 15 years, I think, like, did literally nothing. <laughs> And then in uh, 2017, I decided, well, I'm feeling inspired and I feel like I want music back in my life. Uh, but I, I mean, I'm busy. I work. I have a, a daughter who's 11 years old and we like to do, keep busy. So I, was like, I don't have time for a band. 
I'm just going to figure out how to do all this stuff myself. Uh, I'm going to write some music and I'm going to record it. And as I'm recording it, that's going to be my practicing because oh, I was terrible <laughs> at guitar at that point after 15 years of not playing. So yeah, my, my practice has become sitting down and writing and recording music. So I'm, I'm glad to say I've gotten a bit better over the, uh, the past three years. <laughs> I can at least yeah. know what I'm coming up with now. Uh, yeah, and uh, I, I started learning uh, music production. I had studied it in university, actually, but it was very different back then than it is now. And uh, and yeah, so invested a bit of money in some plugins and some software and learned how to program drums and learned how to program MIDI for like uh, orchestra type stuff. And yeah, just had a ton of fun with it and ended up releasing an album. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, I, that, I mean, that's a lot of work <laughs> to make an album and, you know, and do everything yourself. That's definitely a big project. Yeah, I mean, it, it is a lot of work. I was pretty proud when it all finally happened, I must say. Um, but it didn't feel like work at least not initially, because it was it was really just for fun. And I, I did have the goal of like, I'm gonna release an album eventually. Yeah. Uh, so it was mostly just fun, take my time. There was no real pressure, but then when I realized I had enough for an album, then I was like, oh, I guess I actually have to like, learn how to mix this properly, semi-decently at least, and how to master it. And uh, so then it started becoming a bit more work. And then it was like, oh, wait, I, I gotta have a plan on, how to promote this and oh right now I need to do the graphic design because I need artwork so so at that point it started to become more work and yeah that stuff takes a lot of time I, uh, yeah yeah that's a big project yeah are you good are you planning on putting out more music oh yeah definitely uh um, yeah I've been trying to figure out what to do I've got so many songs written and recorded now uh so I didn't know what to do. And actually, I was just uh, asked a question about it in, I don't do you know Curtis Duar? Yes. Yeah, I, I was asked a question in his music marketing group. So I said, I've got all these songs, uh, and, and these are the songs that fit on the album because they have the same kind of theme, the same kind of feel. I was like, but it's longer than will fit on a CD. Like, what are my options here? Like, I, I don't want to cut any out, but it won't fit on a CD. So anyway, uh, through chat in that group, uh, there were some good suggestions about maybe releasing a double album or two albums. So my plan now, what I'm working on, is releasing my second album, uh, which will probably have five or six songs, all very long songs, though. <laughs> and then releasing another one shortly after that. But I'm going to do both at the same time, the mixing, the mastering, and the artwork and everything so I'll release one and then take some time to breathe and be able to work on the marketing plan and the artwork for the next one but but the next one will be done at that point already so yeah yes yeah, so you're you're planning on doing it yourself again for the for the new album and the new music everything yourself again yeah, yeah I am yeah. Uh, but through but through this uh this whole experience of releasing an album and meeting people and chatting. Uh, I, I've got a few good contacts now, so I, I'm debating in my head uh, whether I'm gonna want to, you know, work with someone uh, in PR because that might make my life easier. Uh, I've got someone in mind that I might wanna go to for some graphic design work or album artwork. And uh, so, so I might branch out with those things a little bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's not, that's great. I mean, that's really great. And and um, Brad asked, what what instruments do you play? Oh, uh, I play guitar and I attempt to sing. Uh, I, I can play bass. I don't have a bass myself. I've, I've just got two guitars here. Uh, so the bass so far has been programmed. But one of these days, I'm going to buy a cheap bass and start recording that. Um, I can play drums very, very terribly, which is why I program drums on my albums, <laughs> because I just wouldn't be able to do the stuff I need to do. Um, and I guess I can kind of play like single note melodies on a keyboard. Uh, that, that's how I often do the uh, 
orchestra parts and things for my music, I'll, you know, record like a single note melody with my MIDI keyboard, and then I'll go and record something under that, and then another part under that. So basically, I'm good at, good-ish at guitar, and that's about it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're giving yourself enough credit, per personally. <laughs> well, well th there's a reason why there's no live performance for this one. <laughs> <laughs> to see how many takes I have to do to get get a guitar tape right and the vocals. Oh my god! I, I should <laughs> uh, tape someday. It's hilarious. I'll, I'll I'll like sing a small section and then like hold my breath afterwards, and then a few seconds later on the recordings, you can hear me just coughing and coughing and coughing. I I don't know how uh, to sing usually, so it's <laughs> yeah. The yeah. the breath part of it is pretty difficult. Yeah, that's definitely very difficult. Yeah, and I noticed that um, you um, mentioned that um, the wilderness and nature is an inspiration for you. Um, how do you, what do you, what do you, um, do you like go out and do you like to take photographs or how do you get your inspiration from the um, wilderness? Gee, it comes from a lot of different ways, I guess. Uh, I, I used to be a photographer. I guess, in theory, I still am. I just don't do much of it anymore. Uh, so yeah, that, that was a big part of it for sure. Just, uh, there's a lot of wildlife here. And even like right out my window, like almost every day when I'm working, because I work from home, almost every day there's like two foxes that come and hang out in the front yard and they play with each other and stuff. So just, I don't know, I, I take a lot of joy from nature and animals and and the ocean. I grew up in Newfoundland, so I love the ocean. I miss it here. Um, we used to be able to travel to Alaska pretty much whenever we wanted, but these COVID times have uh, messed that up. So I haven't seen the ocean for a while now. But yeah, I, I, yeah. I don't know. There's just something about that that gives me life and energy and positivity. And that's, yeah, that's how I like my music to be. It's kind of dark. Uh, I guess some of it is kind of doom metalish, but it's all with a, a positive or hopeful message. Because I don't know, there's there's a lot of terrible things that happen in the world, and I, I I'm not interested in those. I just try to focus on the positivity. All that stuff. Yeah, and that's one thing that I myself really appreciate. I've noticed that um, whenever you post anything. Um, I've always noticed that it's very positive and you always have a positive message to share. And in the times that we're in and with everything being so horrible and negative right now, it's just, it's so refreshing to have that positivity. And um, that's a reason too that I wanted to talk with you because you seem like a very positive person. and. Um, uplifting everyone I think is an important thing and um how do you stay do you have trouble staying positive or how do you stay in that positive mindset yeah I, I don't really know I'm gonna blame my parents for that because uh <laughs> I think they did a, a good job of instilling uh good values in me as a kid and it's transferred over and I see it in my daughter too she's so kind so helpful uh so i i think that's awesome uh but how do i stay positive i don't know i'm not always positive and i think you can hear that in some of the music too because there's always there's almost always like a dark side and it's like okay here's the dark here's the dark but eat the songs uh they always kind of work through that to a positive resolve and uh, i don't know i i i like feeling happy more than feeling dark <laughs> i guess I still listen to dark music and things, but uh, but yeah, not always positive. And and interestingly, like for the la like this past summer through fall, I was in I felt like I was in a darker place than I have been for a while. And uh, some of the music I wrote then too is quite well. It's more metal than uh, and more dark than some of my other stuff. And I just just couldn't figure out what was going on. Anyway, I. It turned out to be health related and once I had a change of uh, medication it was like oh wait a minute <laughs> that's what it was that's what's going on so 
I don't know. Uh, it's interesting. Look, in particular, it was blood pressure related. I have high blood pressure and uh, it turned out it was affecting me. It had gone up and I didn't know it. Uh, and it was really affecting my energy levels and my mood. So um, yeah, health is important and it's such a hard thing. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm also trying to get more healthy by doing more walking and uh, exploring outdoors and stuff. Cause yeah, in these times in particular where we're kind of way more confined, uh, yeah, it's, it's important to take care of your physical health and mental health. Uh, I would say it's not easy, but yeah, well, I'm glad, I'm glad you're feeling better. I'm, you know, I'm glad that you found out what was causing it and, um, and, and that you got it taken care of and you're feeling better. That's good. Yeah, and, um, yeah. I'm surrounded by the best people who support me in every way, uh, my partner and my daughter, like it's the three of us and we go through everything and uh, they're so positive and so supportive that, you know, it really helps if you've got positive people in your life that can keep you moving in the right direction. Yeah, that's that for sure. That's very, very important. Yeah. And uh, that's. And, um, you know, for me, I, I like photography um, also. <laughs> so I can definitely see, you know, the inspiration from nature and being outside and getting the energy from everything that's outside. And just being outside makes you feel better, or at least it makes me feel better. Just, just being outside makes me feel better. And the sun and the birds and the trees and everything, you know, just getting the energy from that. And um, I'm not near any water, so I don't, I don't get to benefit from the water. But, uh, but you know, lots of trees and the birds. I love, you know, especially in the summertime when all the birds are here. Oh yeah. That's just yeah. That's that that's a very positive thing. And just walking outside and listening to that. Um, makes me feel better. Yes, so, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. I, I'm the guy who can get distracted and watch squirrels play for like 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, no, 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 we gotta watch these squirrels. <laughs> yeah, and Brad said the corn gives me energy. Yeah, <laughs> I'm surrounded by corn fields. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I live out in the country and I'm surrounded by cornfields. So, <laughs> yeah. How 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 long does it take you to get to Alaska from where you live? Uh, I can get to Skagway, Alaska, in two hours or, or maybe just under. So yeah. Oh wow! It's so beautiful there. It's unreal. And yeah. It's just perfect. Uh, yeah. okay, you can get to Haines uh, in four hours, and that's also a pretty magical place in itself. Just a totally different part of the world. It's so cool. Yeah, I've never been to Alaska, so maybe you know someday, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's worth it. I don't know. I I haven't explored hardly any of the United States. Uh, I hope to uh, experience more of it, but yeah, but Alaska is just yeah yeah do you think you'll ever play live you know would you ever come think about coming to the united states to play music or just to visit maybe when i'm old and retired although I, I, <laughs> i'm old now i just turned 40 not long ago so it's pretty old oh but that's I, not old <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe i'll start my live career at the same time most bands end theirs because <laughs> I, yeah, I can't having the time for, or being good enough to do it. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a totally different thing, you know. That's yeah. for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I, I think it'd be cool. I, I know you're a fan of Geese to the Morning as well. Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I think it'd be cool if sometime I could maybe like join them to do like second guitar on some of their songs or or do a lead or lead a guitar solo or something like that but yeah no, uh, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't ever see myself as uh doing my own live show in the near future unless it's 
unless it's like me with all the program instruments behind me, maybe some kind of visuals on a, like locally. I could maybe live stream that way at touring. Um, yeah, that would be pretty cool if you if you played with Gates to the Morning. I I, I could dig that. That would be well, pretty awesome. Yeah, we'll I have to. It. Yeah, we'll have to get Sean on board for that, and <laughs> that that would be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that that would be awesome. I I love their stuff. Yeah. Positive and magical. Yeah, I, I would say you guys are similar in that regard, you know, as far as, uh, um, you know, getting energy from nature and, you know, being kind of, you know, kind of cosmic that way. I'd say you guys are kind of similar in that regard. Yeah, sweet. I, I appreciate that because, yeah, I, I, yeah, have huge respect for his music and it's awesome. Yeah, um, yeah. Hopefully... The next door neighbor vacuuming isn't too distracting here. I don't know if you can hear. It. I can't hear uh, myself. I can't hear it. I don't know if anyone else can, but I can't hear it. Okay, good. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so when do you think, um, what's your, do you have a timeline on is um, working on your new music? Do you have a timeline as far as putting it out and uh, putting the pieces together? That's a hard one. I, I don't want to aim too high. Uh, I would say maybe by the end of the year or maybe January. Uh, I don't know. I'm, try, I'm trying to take it easy and take my time with it. All the music's recorded. Well, except for the vocals. I think I've got one song left to do vocals for. And then, of course, I'm going to have to, I'm going to listen back to it. And then I'm going to go, oh, wait, I need more vocal harmonies because uh, the stuff I've been listening to lately. Uh, means I have to do more big groups of epic choir-like vocals. So, um, so yeah, I would say another couple months to, to finish up the final recording touches, mixing and mastering, and then probably start promotion and artwork and things like that. So yeah, I would say probably by the end of the year, um, I might have one of them ready to put out. And then the other one will just sit. It'll be ready, but it'll just sit until I think it's yeah. Put that one out. Yeah. Are you gonna release it? Do you think you'll do a CD again? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Well, I'll look forward to that. That's something to look forward to. Yeah. Towards the end of the year, maybe. <laughs> yeah. And if it's sooner, that that's great. But I, uh, I'm. Not gonna set my expectations too high. Yet. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah, that's so true. Singles coming out uh, for sure. I don't know which ones yet. I've just got too many songs. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I I keep releasing singles every now and then, uh, ones that don't necessarily fit with the albums because I, I I try not to limit myself. It's most like what I write is mostly metal, but I mean I've got some stuff that's pretty much straight up pop uh well in a progressive metal context but <laughs> but yeah uh, I, I, for my singles I, I usually release stuff that's like a little bit different that doesn't seem like it quite fit on the album um so there'll be more of that coming for sure um uh, before the album so yeah yeah are you working on anything else uh no, uh, not mm -hmm. really. I've just, yeah, I just feel like my, my vision for my music is so broad that it all just kind of falls under the same Rick Massey music thing. E even these like pop like ones I've got, I'm like, oh, this is going to be fun. And <laughs> this is going to be album number four, I guess. That's going to be the, <laughs> the one that's, and when I say pop, uh, I think it more like the, along the lines of Devin Townsend's Addicted album kind of thing. It's like heavy, but it's got some yeah unexpected stuff, I think. So Yeah, that's well, that's good. Idea. It's fun to, you know, it's fun to have, to try different things. You know, I have different sounds and try different things. And, I, you know, it is, it's fun to do that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, I've gotten, I've 
what's the word? Uh, I've gotten more accepting of different styles of music as I've gotten older. I remember when I was a teenager and I was like, it is not metal, it sucked. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, now I listen to Marianne's Trench. Uh, we were just listening to all kinds of Taylor Swift videos last night. In fact, one live one was like, oh my God, this could be metal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I listen to a lot of stuff. My daughter has some cool musical taste. She listens to some eclectic, progressive stuff, but also some poppy stuff. And so I'm learning to appreciate a lot of different things. And, whether it's metal or not. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I, I've noticed that, um, well, I'm kind of guilty of that myself. Because <laughs> I've listened to metal pretty much my whole life, and I'm kind of guilty of that, of not giving things outside of the metal genre even a chance, you know. But um, people that I'm friends with that li listen to different kinds of music, you know, I'll definitely try to listen to it and try to appreciate it, you know, I'm, especially because they love it so much. So I'm trying to, when I get, you know, I'm trying to branch out and listen to some different kinds of music myself. Yeah, which yeah, I think is, um, yeah. Oh, sorry, what was yeah. That? Oh, no. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know if I have a little bit of, um, I think um, my video or my, maybe it's my internet connection, but sometimes there's a little bit of a delay. So, oh, um, okay. yeah, okay. it might be my internet connection. So, I don't know if you've noticed that at Probably all. Not. You think so? Yeah. There's sometimes there's just a little bit of a delay and a couple of words get cut off here and there. But, but yeah, uh, in terms of, uh, I guess, the non-metal stuff, uh, I think there's some good, like, bridge-type artists that are, like, if you listen to the music, they're pretty metal, but they they have it, they play it in a way that's not metal. Uh, I can think, like, some of uh, Dave Matthews' band songs, uh, I'm just like, this is, like, this is like listening to Enslaved, except while well, they've got like acoustic guitars and they've got like, they're not using double bass, but their drummer's still pretty amazing. Uh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff now that I, when I listen to non-metal stuff, I can hear that, oh, you add in some distortion and you add in, uh, you know, Gene Hoagland on the drum kit and boom, it'd be metal. So, so yeah, yeah. I'm to things differently and trying to, uh, absorb as much as I can of things that I think I can integrate into my own stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like some of those Queen songs where they have like 20 vocals that come in for a few seconds and just, you know, fill up the speakers, like things like that. I'm just like, yeah, I, I'm going to try some of that stuff. So yeah. This, yeah. The next stuff some of that stuff. Just... Yeah. Some of that stuff is pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. It definitely is. Yeah. I keep getting these now. So uh, <laughs> I, um, I'm going to look at the time. Um, yeah, I'm not even uh, seeing these comments. I don't know if there's anything on there. I should be. Oh, you can't see the comments? Yeah, there are, there are a few comments. Um, Brad asked, do you have a website? Oh, yeah, I do. It's uh, rickmassey.com, but if I can get in here, I'll, I'll post a link to it. Yeah. Which actually reminds me, I probably haven't updated that thing for a while now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it might be a good idea. <laughs> and um, <laughs> and I know your stuff is on, on Bandcamp um, as well. I saw it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I put all my music on Bandcamp. It's a pretty cool site, actually. Uh, it, it seems like they're actually one of the, the fewer services that, like, supports artists really well. I mean, things like Spotify are good for getting people to hear your music, but they, they don't pay very well. Then again, I'm not in yeah. this for the money. This is not my, my main job. This is for the love of it. But 
Yeah, uh, rickmassey.bandcamp.com. Oh, and Jamie. Oh, thank you, Jamie. Jamie posted your uh, a link to your site. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. Mm. Apparently, and, uh, and I know nothing about tech. Uh, I'm supposed to be like <laughs> the tech guy who knows everything, but I can't figure out any of this stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> and Andrew, Andrew posted your band camp, uh, link to your band camp. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, wait, here we go. Okay, I'm just going to take a quick look through the comments, see if I... You got it. Okay. Yeah. No, it only shows me my comments. I don't know what's going on. Oh, okay. Well, Brad said that's one heck of a website. Oh. Ah, thanks. Well, yeah, I, I, I'm a geek. This is why I do the stuff I do. I'm into photography. I'm into music. I'm into graphic design and web design. I'm not all that great at any of them, but good enough to be dangerous at all of them, I think. So, um, <laughs> so yeah. yeah, that's good. Uh, web design. Web design is hard. I I think it's hard. Uh, that's one of the things that frustrates me. <laughs> uh, but the photography part of it, yes. <laughs> but the uh, yeah, um, but the design, the web design part of it is, yeah. So good. I admire people that are able to, you know, put together graphic design and websites and things like that. Yeah, I, I I love that stuff. It's like it's like another language, and there's all these things you can figure out by trying to analyze like the patterns in the code. Uh, and <laughs> I, I approach my music in a similar way. It's like, what can I do to to make it interesting? It's sort of like in terms of patterns or or code or hidden messages or things like that. Uh, I think. I don't know. It's just a geeky part of me. If you if you read through some of my lyrics, there's like words that are intentionally misspelled to give them a different meaning, and and you know some songs reuse parts from other songs in a slightly different way. There's all there's all these hidden things. Uh, it's sort of like computer code. There's all this stuff going on underneath. And if you're building the website and you run into a problem, like let's say you're using a template from another site and you run into a problem, you can go in and you can dig and you can look and you can be like, oh, wait a minute, here's the problem hidden in the code. And so I, I kind of do that with my music too, uh, just to be weird. <laughs> 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 and I had a, a, a smirk. Oh yeah, uh, in Easter, again, I had fun with my website. Uh, Easter came along, so I had the image from the back of the album. Uh, yeah, but then I did a different version of it with an actual Easter egg hidden amongst the the moss on the stump. Uh, and so if you found that, saw that, and clicked it, brought you to a, a special page that I can't even remember what I had there for, I think it was a download of a free song or something. I don't remember how oh, wow. I actually found it, but yeah, like, I, I don't know. I'm a bit of a geek, so I, I do weird things like that. That's actually great. Dig into the music. It'll, uh, Great idea. I love that idea. That'll surprise you. And Great actually, idea. <laughs> similar note, I just discovered this thing. Called... <laughs> yeah, in a similar note, I just, just discovered this thing called Genius. Uh, have you heard of it? No. Yeah, it, it's, it's a website for lyrics, sort of, but... Uh, yeah, my daughter was playing Taylor Swift the other day on Spotify, and as it was playing the song, uh, as the lyrics started, it would down below there was text explaining what the lyrics were about. And then when I went to the next verse, it explained something like, oh, we recorded this in this studio. And I was like, oh my God, it's telling the story of the behind the scenes of this song as you're listening to it. So I did some research, and yeah, so Genius is the site. And uh, you can put in lyrics and stuff, but if you look for lyrics for other artists and click on it, it'll tell you what those lyrics mean. It'll tell you the story behind it or any references and stuff. So, so I've just started inputting my album into that so that I can tell some of the stories behind the lyrics and things. Uh, it's really cool. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I'm quite into that. I like the yeah. stories behind songs. I remember when there was. Uh, when I was a kid and I got Mr. Big's Lean Into It album and uh, 
in the liner notes for every song after the lyrics, they had like just a little short story about the song or what inspired it. And I love that. And you, and you don't see that very <laughs> often. So, so anyway, this genius site is super cool. If you like lyrics, uh, check it out. I do. I do. <clears throat> I, I like singing and lyrics. Yeah, I'm definitely a vocals person. So I, I, I do like that. I'm going to have to check that out because I think, I think I could definitely get into that. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Andrew said he used to use that when he was teaching. That's a good oh. idea. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I can see two comments now. I can see Andrew's. You can update the meeting behind the lyrics. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know if you, it feels like a Wikipedia. I haven't really tried it. I've only done it with my own music yet, but it seems like maybe you could add in stuff if you knew something about another artist's lyrics. You could probably put that in. For sure. But anyway, it's cool. I recommend it. Yeah. So you do um, photography as well, and you do, so you've been doing some uh, products recently, have you? Like uh, print, uh, no, I think I saw a cushion the other day you had with uh, some printed artwork that you'd done. I, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last thing that you said. Um, the, uh, it froze up a little bit. I'm sorry, C oh. could you repeat that? Yeah, no, uh, I was saying, uh, I, I see you do photography and I think I see some, seen some products recently that you're making. Are, are you using photography to uh, put onto products to sell and things now? Yes, well, I have, um, I've been taking photos for a long time and I had all these photos saved and I, I really didn't know what to do with them because, um, I never did photography as a profession. I just did it as a hobby. And I, I didn't really know what to do with all these photographs. So I started printing them and framing them. And uh, I started selling them that way. And then I thought, well, I'll start putting my photography on things. <laughs> and, you know, um, you know, like different kinds of merch and just do a website, you know. I just made a big cartel site and um, I put some framed photography on there and then some photography on some different items like laptop sleeves and tote bags, you know, things like that. And just, just, just as a way to get my photography out there. Um, and it's something that I just recently started. I just recently started doing that. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, because I, I saw you were into vintage items and things. But yeah, yeah. I was just recently I saw some, some kind of merch type items. So yeah. Maybe I, I, may, I may have to pick your brain at another time about merch and how to go about that because that's something I, I've completely avoided. I printed, I think, 20 guitar picks. <laughs> like <laughs> two zero. That's it. That's the extent <laughs> of my <experience. laughs> Oh, yeah. I'd be happy to help you with that. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah, I have, yeah, I'm a vintage, um, I do go out and I, um, I'm a vintage treasure hunter, <laughs> so I do go out and I do find vintage things, and I sell that, I sell that kind of stuff on eBay, but I, I wanted a home for my photography, so I started the big cartel site, so, um, you know, I thought it would be better to just split it up into two separate things. So I just recently did that. <laughs> you know, try to try to branch off, do some different things. Yeah, I, I think that's what keeps us inspired is just like learning and trying new things and hopefully getting enjoyment out of them. Uh, yeah. It's great, it's great when you can do things you enjoy and they don't become too much work uh and i haven't gotten to that point with this yet I, I i did get there with photography where it was it was actually becoming more work and more of a chore honestly and uh, that's why i kind of stepped away from it uh it was like it's, it's too much work I, I'm, I'm not just out taking pictures of things that i'm enjoying 
I mean, being hired to do this and hired to do that, and it was, yeah, it it, it lost its spark. <laughs> yeah, then, I can see that. Yeah. 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 Um, Sheldon Brown, I don't know if you, you saw Sheldon Brown's comment. <laughs> I don't know about one of the most talented musicians, probably one of the <laughs> the most ridiculous, silliest music, musicians you'll meet who always dresses in lime green. But yeah, thanks for the compliment. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we had some uh, pretty cool stuff uh, that we did when we were like teenagers type thing. And Sheldon wrote an amazing song called Lost, which we recorded uh, in uh, our friend's basement. Uh, Kind of got a Foo Fighters alternative rock vibe. Uh, it was pretty awesome. That's cool. <laughs> and Brad, Brad likes your lime green shirt. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good color. It's bright. It's it's a happy color. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've got lime green shirts. I've got neon orange shirts. Uh, we got some regular ones too, but I try to wear these ones as much as possible because I don't know. I feel better in this color. <laughs> yeah, I I can see that. Yeah, that's why. Uh, like I wear band T-shirts, and most of them are black. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's kind of nice to get some color on sometimes too. You know. Yeah, they're almost always black, aren't they? Uh, yeah. Uh, Devin Townsend, that's gray. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Uh, I don't buy much band shirts anymore because I don't I don't see shows for one. Uh, we don't get anything here, any metal shows. But uh, but yeah, I, I've still got a bunch of metal shirts. Some that are like ripped apart to the point where you can't wear them anymore. Like my Death Symbolic shirt, my favorite. Oh man, it's so awesome! But I can't even wear it anymore. And uh, yeah, so the only ones I wear now are the Devin Townsend uh, Transcendence one and. Uh, I've got a uh, Woods of Ypres, uh Woods 5 shirt that I got with the CD when I ordered that. But yeah, I don't, I don't wear them much anymore. Yeah. Well, like Sheldon says, you're, you're um, starting the lime green trend of 2021. <laughs> oh, sweet. If I can get more, if it means I'm able to get more lime green hats or shirts or anything like that i'm all for it yeah that would be great that would be great oh do you have anything else that that um do you have anything else you'd like to talk about uh not that i can think of i i was hoping i'd be able to uh, to show some new music or something here today but i don't think the technology is going to allow that to happen uh, I think we're just lucky we could get together to chat and that was awesome uh, yeah yeah well i mean if you're, although it sounds like you're still kind of cutting out <laughs> yeah Alrighty. if you want to post anything for us to listen to feel free to do that if if you do want to share it you know anything that you're working on that would be great um, I, I get little blips and bleeps. Oh, sorry, I didn't catch that last part that you're working on. Would be great. <laughs> I think it's my bad internet here. Oh, I've lost Heather. How do I invite? I don't know if anyone can hear me. The internet is so bad here that I think I may have lost this. I've lost Heather for sure. Let's 
so I don't <laughs> remove for weight groups either. Oh, Kaylee says we can. It's good. I didn't say anything too ridiculous. Okay, trying to add Heather back in here. I'm not sure if this is going to work because I think we're doing this. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, good. I thought I lost you. <laughs> I can hear you. <laughs> okay <laughs> i can hear yeah, you apparently they can still hear me but, but we lost oh good you. and again you're kind of uh, what's the word chop your screen so um uh, we might be having internet issues. Yep, definitely internet issues. <laughs> uh, it's probably a good time to wrap it up. Oh, I didn't mean for you to disappear as soon as I said that. <laughs> My internet is kicking you off. Okay, I'll give it a, a second to see if. Heather comes back uh, so we can say goodbye. Yeah, thank you to everyone who has tuned in. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, if, if you like lime green, tell me in the comments because then I'll start making lime green merch or something. Or if you like hot sauce, I can do more videos of me eating extremely spicy things and crying afterwards. Um, I'm into that kind of thing too. Uh, let's see, Heather. Oh, let's try this again. Okay. Oh, hey. that that's better. <laughs> that's better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully the internet connection is a little bit better. You're not fuzzy anymore, so hopefully it's a better signal. Awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was just asking people to support Lime Green in the comments, and maybe I'll make Lime Green merch later. Or uh, and ask them if, if they're interested in hot sauce, let me know, because uh, I can make videos of me eating spicy things. And <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> And uh, lime green merch, I think, would be pretty awesome too. Actually, I don't yeah. recall. I don't even recall ever seeing any lime green merch. So you'd have oh, something I, going there. Yep, it's something worth considering for sure. <laughs> yeah, that definitely. That's definitely something to consider. Yeah, and you could do like um on Bandcamp when you have your CD. You can just put a merch bundle together, which would be pretty awesome. Yeah, it would be an awesome idea. I, I should look into it. I really should. Um, yeah. Well, like I say, I, I haven't done any any merch stuff so far, but it sounds like from the people I've talked to that it's a it's a very good thing, and it and people are interested in that. So. Yeah, and it's a way you know since we're not able to see people play live right now um it's a great way to support an artist you know to buy their merch buy their music so it, it would just be a great way to show our support yeah yeah definitely I'd like yeah to come up with some unique ideas of things that uh that are useful but different, I guess. But anyway, it's something to look into. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so something that hopefully won't 
you know, be too frustrating or too much of a chore, you know, to, oh, yeah. to you know, to make and to offer for sale. So that's uh, another uh, service or something. I don't know if there's any like on demand printers or, or product creation services. I, get, I just have to do my research, I guess. But, but yeah, figure out who can make what. I, I have a great one for guitar picks. That, that I know. Uh, I was <laughs> happy with it. They're probably yeah. only 20, but uh, yeah, I have to look into some other things and see who can create what. Yeah, check out um, Printful. It's P R I N T F U L. Okay. You can, uh, check them out. They they uh, drop ship. It's print oh. on demand. Oh yeah. Okay, I just googled it and yep, there's a bunch of information there. Sweet, thank you. I'll check that out. You're, you're welcome. Mockup generator, cool. Yeah. Yeah, there, yeah. yeah. There's lots to learn in all these areas. There's there's so much when it comes to uh, the arts whether it's photography or music or graphic design, I feel like I could spend the rest of my life learning about this stuff and still never have it all figured out. Yeah, I know. There's so much, so much. And especially I feel like, you know, um, musicians nowadays really have to wear so many different hats now, um, you know, so many different hats and do so many different things and you have to do so many things on your own now um that's a big change of how it used to be yep definitely and there's so many bands now there's so much good music out there too uh it's yeah it, 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 the things you have to learn are completely different too i, I feel like 20 25 years ago it was it was a bit simpler in some ways because there was no social media. There was no band camps and worrying about producing merch and stuff. You could go on forums, uh, you know, join a couple forums and start sharing your music and interacting with people there. And it was, it was, it was, it was sort of easier. And now there's so much. Oh, God, I don't even know where to begin. People <laughs> talking to me, like TikTok and I'm like, what? Oh God! I picked up Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Now I got to join TikTok. <laughs> yeah. I'm just hoping that TikTok TikTok is actually useless for the prog metal market. Because if it is, it means I don't have to use it. <laughs> yeah, keeping up with social media is definitely a task for sure. Um, I, yeah, it's. And then, and then it, trying to figure out what to post on which social media network, just so I feel like I shouldn't be posting the same thing on, on everything. So trying to figure out, you know, what should I be posting on Instagram? What should I be posting on Twitter? What should I be posting on Facebook? You know, <laughs> uh, that's a job in itself, really, you know. <laughs> so much time. And yeah. Yeah, because I do see some artists, you know, sometimes they, do, I don't know what it is exactly they do, but they link their Twitter to their Facebook or something. Yeah. So they post on Facebook, it automatically shows up on Twitter, but Twitter only has like 260 characters or whatever. So it shows a bit of the post and then it's dot, dot, dot. And it's like, oh, no, no, no. Just, just, read yeah. Twitter at least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but um, yeah. Well, if you uh, if you decide to go the PR route for uh, this time around, you have to let us know what kind of a difference it made. You know, as far as um, getting written up in different publications and uh, if it helped your sales and things like that. I, I'd like to know that. Oh yeah. Well, if I yeah. do. I will definitely let you know if it goes well, if it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm, I'm not like big into the negativity, but if, if I, if I work with someone and they do make a, a positive difference, I'm going to. Yeah. That person. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 yeah see, uh, Cause it's a lot of work trying to, and, and again, like learning those things as well, you know, I, I can write a press release. No problem. I, I this is kind of stuff I do for, 
my normal day-to-day -day work uh, but but like reaching out to different publications and trying to get reviews and trying to get interviews and things it's a lot of work and and then you know not knowing okay well I've sent them an email should I send a follow-up one am I going to annoy them if I get in touch too many times well what about what about this publication they don't have a website but they're on Twitter if I send them a DM are they going to get mad like trying to navigate all that stuff like I don't want to annoy people um, yeah. I'm just trying to figure out how I can promote myself in a respectful way without, you know, wasting other people's time or, or just being annoying to them. So yeah. And that, that, oh yeah. And they have, <laughs> yeah. And, and I think, uh, um, you know, a, a good PR person, they have their own, they have their own context, you know, they have, people within the industry that they use a lot. So they've built relationships over the years. And um, I think they have a lot of good contacts. Yep, definitely. Yeah. Um, one thing I do have to say about this day and age, is kind of cool now being with me, being on social media and stuff and being more active than I was like even five, 10 years ago. Uh, but the metal scene on Twitter and probably on Facebook, which I don't use as much, but like on Twitter, oh man, there's such an awesome supportive group of kind of mid small size uh, publications and things that do so much for metal. And uh, I'm, I'm quite sure they're not getting paid a lot, if anything at all, but the support and the things they do, including you, like doing these chats and helping people, you know, get their message out or help helping others hear about it. I, I'm just shocked and I, I love that there's so much support uh, for the underground metal stuff. It's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just happy to be part of that community and chat with these people because I feel like there's some kind of kindred connection there that, you know, there's, yeah. good, there's good and there's positivity and it's, Awesome. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's really, you know, it's really great to um, try to lift everybody up and uh, just try, you know, like what we've tried to do with this group, um, just try to have a platform where underground artists, you know, have a platform to you know, share their music or share their experiences and um, hopefully together, you know, all of us together, we can help, you know, amplify the word and, and get the word out and, you know, at least spread the word and, you know, help underground artists at least have a voice, you know, because sometimes it's hard nowadays, you know, you're, you can get lost, you, you know, definitely get lost in everything that's going on. So it's nice to have a group of people that can help each other out. Yeah, it's so awesome. I, I, I appreciate it so much. And I, I know there's many others that do too. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, the people that write for blogs and um, people that review music and uh, have podcasts. And, you know, a, a lot of people just do it for the love of music. And they're not making any money off it. They're not doing it for the money. <laughs> they're just doing it because they love, they love music. And yeah. I think that, that, you know, that's that's pretty incredible. People give are so willing to give themselves and their time to do that. That's that's pretty amazing. Yeah, it sure is. I I feel guilty when these places review my stuff or, you know, give me track premieres and stuff. I'm like, what are you guys getting out of this? <laughs> what can I give you? But well, obviously I share the posts and I interact yeah. and, I, and I try and promote them uh, as the place to go, kind of thing. Um, but, but yeah, I feel I feel almost guilty. It's like I I'm not. Why Why are you doing this for me? It's so awesome of you to do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I think we realize, you know, as as a collective, um, you know, the underground independent music scene, you know, we we as a collective, we've kind of realized that, you know, we we need to help each other. 
you know, we need to help each other because it's, it's hard to, to make it through, uh, you know, and it's hard, it's hard to break out and, um, you know, get your music heard and get in front of people. It's difficult. So everyone working together, I think uh, we can make a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I love that now that I'm back kind of in the scene that, Whereas before it was all dark and angry and this and that. And there's still a lot of that. Yeah. Music is mm -hmm. that but I feel more positivity and more um, togetherness in the scene. Yeah. And it's just so awesome, especially because it's such a wide world now. Um, and then for me, who doesn't have a metal scene in where I live, I don't have any metal friends or anything i don't get to go to shows and hang out with people um so yeah just just the social media universe of metal right now is just an awesome uplifting place yeah it is yeah and it's nice to feel included i th um the uh, i've always been made to feel included which um you know it's i always i you know that's something that um i always have felt that inclusiveness and that's one thing i like you know is that feeling of being included yeah absolutely yeah i i mentioned a similar thing in my song um oh the dance of the dead and alive which was uh, weirdly about my love for halloween but i was like one of the reasons why that's my favorite holiday is because it's a day where not well, that's inclusive like everyone's welcome it doesn't matter gender it doesn't matter age it doesn't matter anything like halloween is the day where everyone gets to be what they want to be there's no exclusion it's just and like to me that's like how i wish the world was you know yeah there's, there's no exclusion. There was, yeah and, and i feel like the metal scene oddly the rest of the world who doesn't know metal probably would expect the exact opposite, but I feel like there's so much positivity and inclusiveness that, yeah, that, that's where I want to be. Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Yeah, it's very important. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of the cool thing about going to a show is everyone's there, everyone's together, um, it, we're all listening to the same thing, and it's making us all happy at the same time and it's like there's no other experience like that yep, absolutely i can't yeah. wait to get to it. You yeah know, I, won't have metal, I won't have metal shows per se but uh, i'm gonna fly out somewhere and experience that again as soon as we can <laughs> yeah as soon as we can yeah <laughs> yeah well um I'm going to, um, if it's okay with you, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Unless you have anything else you want to talk about? Nope. I, nope. I just want to say thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. It's been fun. Uh, it's yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. It's, it's cool that we can do this, even though the technology, or is it the user, as in me? I don't know. <laughs> there are issues, <laughs> but, uh, but it's great. <laughs> Well, thank you. Um, I, I'm very happy. I'm glad you came on to talk. I really enjoyed talking to you. And um, you're welcome to come back anytime, anytime you want. And thank you so much for being here with me today. You're very welcome. I enjoyed it. Okay. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks. You too. Have thank you. You too. Bye-bye.